Hey friends, it's Diana, and we are here to sew the paper bag pattern, uh, pant pattern, and this is such a trendy little pant right now, and um, I am sewing the kids version, but it's the same thing, the same steps for the adult version, so you can use this tutorial for either one. I'm just using the kids because it's smaller, so you can kind of see everything that I'm doing, so it'll be a little bit easier, but it is the same exact steps. I'm doing everything. I'm doing pockets. I'm doing a sash. I'm doing elastic so you can see how you do it all now um, I, before I get started let me tell you this we've started a, a fan uh, fun giveaway and uh, we are selecting a random subscriber a new subscriber every month to win a $50 LA Maggie certificate so if you haven't go ahead and subscribe and subscribe and comment on our video so you could be added to that drawing and every month we do a drawing so every month there's a chance for you to win so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't uh, links below subscribe and come join us on our Facebook and Instagram page if you haven't done that yet we'd love to see you but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. As usual, I already cut out my pattern. All my pieces are cut out and we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to put my pocket on. Now, um, I have my pattern piece here and yes, I traced it out and I have it on this little piece of paper because sometimes it's easier for me to trace out when I'm doing a smaller sizes because the kids grow up so fast. That way I don't have to print a new pattern every day. Even though with the layers, it's pretty easy. Um, so sometimes I trace it if it's a small pattern if it's not I might just print it so I did I traced out and so I have my line right here where my fold over is so I'm going to transfer that well, all I'm doing is uh, here where the line is I'm just folding that over and I steamed it to sh give me a crease of where my fold over is so I have that and I'm attaching my pocket a quarter of an inch down from that fold line, from the bottom of the fold line, not from the top, but from the bottom where the where the uh, fold ends up. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach my pocket. My pocket has to be right sides together with my pants. And remember, it's facing down because their hands are gonna go in, so you have to make it face down. Um, if you're doing pockets on all of them, this is what you do on all the pant pieces. Now I'm gonna sew that raw edge right there to attach that pocket. You would do it to all the pants. Uh, so that would be four pockets if you're doing one pocket just one pocket then you need to make sure that you put it on the right side of both front and back pattern piece so if you're gonna do one pocket you need to make sure that you do one on the left side front and the left side back you don't want to do it uh, on the wrong one and then have half a pocket on each side that will not work trust me. okay so now that I've sewn my pocket on and I did the same thing with my other one. My pocket is sewn on on this one. I'm gonna attach my interfacing. And I'm just doing that as per instructions on my interfacing. I'm just put, uh, attaching it up here to the front, the top of that fold over uh, part. Um, if you want to, something that's less bulky too, you can, instead of cutting them out uh, to four pieces, you can just cut one long piece. And then once we attach the pants together, you can go ahead and put that one long piece on the front and one long piece on the back. Um, but I just did the four pieces individually. So now we're gonna go ahead, now that we did the interfacing, let's go ahead and work on the uh, sash and then we'll move on to the rest of the pant. So here's my sash, it's just my straight um, uh, cut out already. And I'm going to fold that right sides together like so and I'm gonna steam it so it will stay. Now you can pin it I am bad and I don't usually pin. So I'm just gonna go and sew all the way around the edge to close that up and leave the back end open. Now, um, you can do this with a sewing machine. And I think it's probably most people do with a sewing machine. I just do it with a serger because I'm comfortable in a serger. But if you just do a straight stitch on a sewing machine, um, you can do that and then um, trim the edges, around the edges. Don't cut the, the uh, thread, just trim around the edges. And um, with uh, shearing scissors, you can do along the edge or you can do little triangles to make it less bulky. It's up to you. I haven't, found, I haven't had an issue with it being too bulky when I serge, so I just do it that way. But um, really, it is up to you. I just do it that way because it's to me, it's easier and faster. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around and hopefully it'll be 
uh, easy going sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not and I don't know how this one's gonna be sometimes it's like cooperates and it goes like shoop, super smooth and then sometimes it's like I, it takes me forever like this is the longest part of the whole project I'm like are you kidding me but um, this one seems to be doing all right okay so here we go we're turning it all the way around I have this cool tool um, that helps me to turn them around it came undone but it's okay because I'm almost there and it's like a, it's got like a little hook so it pulls it you attach it and you pull it out so neat so here it is it's out and what I'm gonna do is I don't have a tool for this I might have a tool for this I don't really know I inherited a lot but I uh, haven't I don't know what all of it is so I need to go through everything and figure it all out you know how that is my sewing machine my sewing room I'm sorry it's always under construction. I feel like there's, I'm always doing something. And so we uh, just finished working on some things, uh, got new flooring and some things like that. So there's still a lot to be done. My husband's supposed to be building me some shelves for my fabric. So my fabric right now, if I was to open that closet, it's full of bins of fabric because I have nowhere to put it right now. And it's stressing me out. You know how that is. Um, so I just used a pencil and poked it and made it even see how it's not it's pretty even um, Even with the serger. So I just did it with the serger because to me. It's just faster than um, Doing it the other way, but it really is up to you how you want to do it So here's my sash one and two now it is not recommended that you do sash for under 4t size because it's always dangerous to live leave a, a child unsupervised with strings. You know, you don't never know what they're gonna do with those strings. So, uh, so our, our, the pattern, it says it's not uh, recommended to be done um, to a less than 4T pattern. Um, so I'm just gonna throw that out there. Okay, so here's my pant piece. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew the seam. Uh, no, sorry. I'm gonna baste my uh, straps on. So I need to figure out which one is my front. So this is my front. I'm just using my um, pattern piece to show me what my front pieces are because they're just a tiny bit different, the front and the back. Actually, I think, let's see. Yeah, I think these are my back. Whoop. Yeah, these are my back. They're a tiny bit different. And um, they, as they get bigger, they'll be more different. So. Um, you gotta uh, separate it so here's my front and I am going to grab my uh, sash and I'm going to attach it and we're gonna pin it here's my fold line and you're gonna pin it between the two lines that they give you in the pattern piece and I already know it's right here so I'm just gonna baste it right here but there's a two fold line so you want to make sure that it's in between the two fold lines okay and I'm just going to base that on both of them. Let's see. Oh, come on. In between the two, the pattern piece, you can uh, put it on top you know, and, and figure it out. So I'm just basting that on. Just so that when I go to sew them on, they didn't move out of the way and didn't get sewn on. I strongly dislike when that happens. And it's happened before. And you have to go back in and do it again. All right, so here's my sash on the front, the two front ones. And I'm gonna kind of pin it in the middle just so that it, it's kind of out of the way. I don't wanna sew it on when I'm sewing the the pants so now I'm gonna do the out seam so I've got my back my front and I'm gonna take my back so you gotta make sure these are pinned together you you gotta make sure you have a front and you have a back you do not want to do not want to put uh, two backs together and two fronts together so you want to make sure that you have those two so while we're aligning the outside edge of your piece all the way together 
and we're going to pin it. If you don't have a pocket, you're just gonna go straight down, but if you have a pocket, obviously, you're gonna go around the pocket. So I'm gonna sew all the way around that pocket. And you're going to be sandwiching that um, sash right here of them together. And be careful if you're doing a sash to move it out of the way, this other end, because you don't want this to be attached as well. <laughs> that would not be good. Okay, so I'm gonna sew all the way around on the outer seam. sewn all the way around and I'm gonna do the same thing to my other piece my other front and back okay let me go ahead and do the same thing to the other one and then we'll move on to the next step all right so now that my pant leg is put together I went ahead and steamed that area right there where my pocket is so it's nice and flat and now we're gonna move on to adding the elastic now there's two ways of doing this and I am gonna do it this way. The smaller sizes, I'd say do it this way because it's the cuff is so small. But with the bigger sizes, you can do it the different way. If you're gonna do it the different way, you will do it after we sew the side together, which is our next step. But if you're gonna do it this way, you would do it before you sew them. Because once you sew them together, it's such a little space, it's kind of hard to do. Um, so you would do the same steps only already closed up, okay? So you would fold a quarter of an inch down first, then, and steam and that's what you're doing if you're doing the same way it's just gonna be in a circle okay then we're gonna fold another half an inch down and steam and you would do the same thing for if you were doing it on a round okay but the only difference is oh that's hot I'm gonna pin it right now since I am doing it um, straight I'm going to sew it at a 1 8 inch uh, I'm gonna sew it all the way straight to the end. If you were doing it on the round, you would leave a little space opening to insert your elastic. But since we're gonna be inserting our elastic on the sides, we don't have to leave that inch, that uh, inch or two inch up opening. But you would if you were doing it, um, whoops, I almost just searched it. If you were doing it on, uh, on the round. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that up. One eighth of an inch from the edge. This just makes it easier because on that round, on the little tiny baby's leg, it's kind of hard. Anyway, so now that that's done, I'm gonna grab my elastic, if I can find it. Here it is. I'm gonna use my safety pin and I'm going to insert it in that uh, casing that we just made. And before it goes all the way through, I'm going to secure it at the end. Now, if you're doing, like I said, if you're doing the other method where it's just on the round, you would just uh, go all the way in and come out at one end and then um, uh, come out at the other end and then um, sew them together, the, the two ends of the elastic. But in this way, we're going to secure it. So I'm, bringing it all the way into the edge and then I'm gonna secure that edge right there. I'm just using a zigzag stitch to secure it so it doesn't come out. And then I'm going to pull it all the way through so it's secured right there. Now I'm gonna pull it all the way through and come out to this side and I'm gonna pin it so it doesn't go back in. And then I'm gonna take this off it's right there. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on another, um, just a uh, stitch right there to secure it on. So now my elastic is on, and I don't have to worry about doing a little cuff elastic, you know, on that little leg, okay? So now I'm gonna fold my legs together and I'm gonna sew that inseam right here. 
Don't sew it all the way up the crotch, just the inseam. Because then we're going to put the legs together. And I'm going to do the same thing to both legs, just the inseam. And they're coming along. They're going to be so cute. So cute. I love the paper bag. They really are like so in right now with cute little tops. Um, okay, so because we did it this way, you'll have to tuck in that serger tail later. Um, that is the only negative of doing it this way. You'll have that serger tail there. But, uh... If you do it the other way, you won't have that, obviously. The way that I tuck that in is I flip it backwards and then over the actual seam, I do a zigzag stitch and I just sew it back on there. That's how I do it. It's kind of simple to me. Um, now we're going to go ahead and insert. We're going to turn one leg right side out. And we're going to insert it into the pant of the other leg. And we're going to meet the uh, seam at the bottom. We're going to sew both of those legs together. That's what we're doing right now. And then we're going to go up the side. Make sure that those uh, straps are out of the way. You don't want to sew them. And so we're going all the way up one side. And we're going to go all the way up the other side. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew that on. sewn on we're gonna turn it right side out and we're almost done <laughs> what in the world would somebody put in these little tiny baby pockets nothing look at this how cute is this oh goodness all right almost done so now okay actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it side out okay and then we're gonna fold it down on that fold line and the first thing we're going to do is steam it give it a really really good steam right here because that's what's gonna make that look of the paper bag this stiffness right here of the little gather waistline okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew it together and we're going to sew it at one eighth of an inch from the interfacing so i'm going to from that waist out so i'm going to go ahead and sew it oh before we do that i'm sorry i knew i was missing a step we're going to finish that raw edge first of the pants so you can either just uh six egg stitch serger then if you want you can do a fold over uh quarter of an inch to hide that seam if you want to all right now there we go now it's uh searched if you want to you can go ahead and fold that under and and surge it and i mean uh, steam it a quarter of an inch if you want to tuck it in that's fine i'm just going to leave it raw that's fine with me so here we go again we want to make sure that we steam it again really well i'm going to take those slash sashes out because i don't want to get them caught when i'm sewing that on so i'm going to sew it onto my pants and I am going to leave you got to leave a space 
if you're do I mean so not if you're doing you are doing you got to leave a space to put the elastic through so you want to leave a little bit an inch so that way you can feed the elastic through there because you don't want to close it out and then not be able to feed the elastic so I'm gonna go around I'm just doing a straight stitch one eighth of an inch from the about the edge Making sure that everything is out of the way and the sash is out of the way and everything's out of the way. I think that's the hardest part of sewing to me is making sure everything else is out of the way. I feel like sometimes I just go for it and then I end up having like something else get caught underneath it. And then All right, I lost you there for a second, but I did. I sewed it on. Nothing got caught underneath it. And so now we're going to figure out where oh here it is i i didn't mark it but okay we're gonna figure out where to do our next uh line so we can encase that uh that uh elastic if you're doing it if you're doing a sash you're going to do it one eighth above the sash so now i'm going to tuck those sashes underneath because we're going to encase them uh so if you're doing a sash you're going to go one eighth above and you're going to mark you can use chalk you can use whatever you have to mark the line one eighth above that sash. If you're doing a newborn to six to nine months, you do three fourths from that line you already did, three fourths of an inch. And if you're doing the, anything higher than that and no sash, you would do an inch. So you would make them an inch apart, okay? So I, I have the sash right here. So I'm gonna go one eighth from the sash and I'm going to mark it right there. One eighth. I'm feeling the sash on the inside and that's how I'm doing it. But you can turn it around actually and do it from the front. One eighth of an inch and one eighth of an inch Maybe right there from the sash so that your sash does not get caught. And then you can obviously draw the line. I am bad. I usually just freehand it, especially because I'm doing... Um, it's black, so you can't really see the thread. So, yeah, I'm bad. But anyway, you want to make sure that you draw it all to remind you where it's at. Sorry, guys. I'm actually taking my time with this one. Okay, make sure your strings, your um, sashes are out of the way when you're going to sew this. And you don't need to leave a gap for this because the elastic is going to go in through the back, through the back, through the back, through the back. The only thing you need to make sure with this one is that you don't catch anything else and also that you um, don't catch the sash, which would be included in the anything else, right? We are almost done with this cute little pair. I love it. I love it so much. And it is so simple. Fancy but simple. Alright, so now that my line is done, I'm going to go in and grab my elastic. And now this is how you would feed it to the ankle part if you were doing it. This is how you would do the ankle part if you were doing the um, the other method. And I'm gonna go in through that hole I left right there. And I'm going all the way around. Feeding the elastic. Like I said, sometimes this is the hardest part. Somebody gave me advice and said to go ahead and pin it before I feed it all the way through. So I'm doing that. I'm going to pin it right here because sometimes I like it's easy to fit th feed through and then you just like go like blah, 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 blah. before you know it, you've got the elastic back all the way in and then you can't find the other edge. So they're like, just go ahead and pin it. So that's what I did. I just pinned it. So that way it won't go in and leave me with no end and then I have to redo it. That's happened to me before. 
<laughs> Has it happened to you before? I think everything's happened to me before. Okay, so now we're gonna grab those two edges of the elastic, put them right sides together. I mean, overlap them together like a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch and I'm going to sew them together. forth with a zigzag and then I'm gonna tuck it in and I'm gonna go with a straight stitch and close that gap right there that I made that two inch or one and a half inch gap however big you made it and that is it guys that's it we finished our pants let me turn it right side out. <clears throat> Look at how cute these things are. If you tell me these are not the cutest things, I don't know. I don't know what are. Oh my goodness. Look at these. They look like they were made for a doll. I do have to go ahead and tuck that in like I said, I usually do a zigzag stitch. But anyway, I just wanna show you. How cute are these things? And you know what? Same exact thing for adults. You're gonna do the same exact thing. And they're gonna look just as cute on you. I mean, obviously bigger, but just as cute. Amazing. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed the sew along. Please, please, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you are not part of our Facebook page or Instagram page, please join us. We wanna see your creations. And we want you to get inspired by what everybody else is making. And um, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe so you can enter to win that $50 gift certificate for Ellie and Mac on a monthly basis. And you can get yourself a bunch of new patterns. And um, please let me know if you have any questions. And like, comment, share. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.